Hi, I'm Holly, and with my sister Heather, you're listening to Haunted Family Podcast, a weekly podcast about the paranormal, unsolved mysteries, and even some true crime. And this one is a little bit of everything. It is. This this podcast is kind of like Haunted Family Podcast in one location. Yeah, really. I Earlier, I sent Heather a text, and I was like, okay, is there any part of this area that doesn't have stuff happening? No, because pretty it's much just, not. Yeah, it's crazy. And we we drove through this area on our East Coast tour of pilot truck stops and was supposed to spend a couple days investigating the area with... Well, I mean, she was in the documentary about it. Did you forget so the man's name? She, she, <laughs> well, I was just thinking about how to put this. And she runs a pretty successful paranormal group in the area. So, yeah, it would have been really fun, but... Sadly, we only got to spend like 10 minutes with her. Yeah, because Heather decided to run over the curb and we didn't have a tire blowout. We had a tire explosion across the street from a tire place and we had to argue with them because it was like 20 minutes till closing time, like the day before a long weekend slash holiday. It was bad. But you know what? I still maintain that if this had happened in eastern Kentucky, the guys in that garage would have made sure that our car got on the road. And they did. but Eventually. It, well, I had to go in and in my, you know, very Kentucky accent, basically just lay it out. Because on the phone, they were like, I'm sorry, man, we can't help you. I walked across the street and was just like, listen, I will be camped out in your parking lot until Tuesday morning when you open. If you do not help me get a tire... Because I've got to get home. And they were nice. And they did it. I guess because they didn't want me to be camped out there all weekend. But apparently, everybody in the car had had precognition that something was going to happen with the tire. Except for the driver. Who actually caused the accident. Yes. But, this episode just kind of seals it for me. That we're definitely, we're going back. Like, that's the plan. Next summer, we're going. Yeah. Um... And we'll probably focus most of our trip next time on this area of New England. Although we got to swing by uh, Mystic again. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to drive through Mystic to get here, so. And all of our listeners are like, what in the world are these crazy ladies talking about? Yeah. We're talking about the Bridgewater Triangle. Yeah, actually, our New England listeners are like, "Oh God, I bet that I know what this is about," or anybody who reads the title of this episode. Yeah, because we act like it's a big secret, but it, by the time this is live, everybody knows what it is because they can read the title. True, but I kind of like building up the mystery. I know it's like, even though there is no maybe mystery, maybe we're going to say it's a Bridgewater Triangle, and maybe. Oh, yep, yeah. it really is. We're just we're not like Aaron Makey of Lore. We like just laying it out there in the title. We don't like you reading the title and be like, well, what in the world is this? I know, but man, I still love lore. We don't have the cult following that he has, so some people would just skip right over our episodes. I know, but we do have a following. And you know what? I love it when they send us messages and send us pictures of their dogs. Because I love that. Like, that made my week. It made Hank's week, too. He was really glad that we got messages and, you know, people were talking about their dogs, too. Yeah. And, you know, if you want, if you, you're you on Instagram and you want to tag us in a picture of your dog, or your goat, or your chicken, or your we'd cat. love that. We Pretty love animals. Anything. We love animals. And if you've got a miniature pygmy cow, um, yeah, definitely yes. tag us in that. Particularly a miniature Jersey cow. Because I swear that will be the next animal we add to this farm. Oh, I was thinking a Scottish Highland cow. Well, I want one of those too. But I think we want a Jersey first. And I've already found the perfect farm. There is a veterinarian down in the western part of the state. You know, in the part of the state that's almost not even Kentucky anymore. I know. My co-workers really dislike it when I tell them that they're hardly in Kentucky. And she breeds miniature jerseys and I follow her on Facebook just so I can see all of the cute baby goats that she, baby um, cows that she has. 
she also raises well she also raises pygmy goat so <laughs> okay so let's jump into the bridgewater triangle okay so um it's about I mean, it's a decent size area it's 200 square miles right which well that's about if you are in kentucky it's about from my house to northern kentucky so but two hours ish yeah um and it is in the southeastern section of massachusetts there's towns of abington rehoboth i'm probably saying that wrong freetown um Rockton, Whitman, West Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, Middleborough, Middleborough Dighton, um, Berkeley, Taunton. So, quite a lot of towns. Um, Fall River might fall into there. I'm not I, rem I don't I remember. I think it does. And all of this is about 30 miles south of Boston. Well, all of this where it starts, because obviously it's 200 miles, and 200 miles is not going to be all of it 30 miles away from Boston. <laughs> now this whole area was at one time the land of the Wampanoag Indians. If you're like, oh that name kind of sounds familiar but I don't know where from. They're the ones who saved the pilgrims butts. Which they shouldn't have. These were the ones who made sure that the first white settlers, well, first English settlers that stepped foot in on American soil made it through their first winter. And I say first English settlers because there is some serious um, evidence that the Vikings may have actually said, um, came to this area first. Did the blonde hair give it away? Maybe. Um, There are some key historic landmarks inside the um, Bridgewater Triangle area. One is the Hockamock Swamp, and it's about 5,000 square acres, and it is on the western side of the triangle. It is home to an 8,000-year-old Native American burial ground. Which, I don't know... if. Our listeners know this or not, but nothing good ever happens on a Native American burial ground. Ever. Pretty much, Native American burial ground, you can guarantee that that is flippin' haunted. Yes. Because we don't really like our land being, our burial grounds being disturbed. Kind of makes us angry. <laughs> um, actually, the city that, the town that me and Holly grew up in was built on ancient burial grounds. Um, Adena Mountain Builders, I believe it was. Yes. Yeah. Dighton Rock. It's um, kind of the American Rosetta Stone, only it's not been deciphered yet. I thought Rosetta Stone was a series of tapes that will teach you how to talk in other languages. It is, but it was also an ancient stone that was found that had all these different languages on it that allowed us to translate Egyptian hieroglyphics. Totally did not know that. That's how the um, tape series got its name. I just thought it was somebody named Rosetta that liked stones. No. I actually, I wanted to see Titan Rock while we were in Massachusetts, but time got away from us. Yeah, we didn't even get to see Plymouth Rock. No. And that was on our list too. Then there's Profile Rock, which is located in the town of Fremont. Not Fremont, Freetown, um, and it looks like a um, profile of a Native American, and it was considered sacred to the Wampanoag. And if you know anything about Native Americans, we also take our sacred places very serious, and you don't want to disgrace that. And then there is Anawan Rock, which is in the Hockamock Swamp. And Anawan Rock was named that because that is where Chief Anawan of the Wampanoag surrendered to the colonists, thus ending King Philip's War. Okay, one thing that I have learned about New England. Y'all love your rocks. Says the person who likes to go hang out at Lakiji. Well, yes, but I don't, I don't hang out at like a bunch of other 
like rock landmarks like actually Lakiji and uh, there's one more but I can't remember the name of it those are like the only two rocks in this whole town that that people hike to and obviously I don't even go to the one that I can't remember the name of you're weird so this area has, really has a little bit of everything going on like literally if you could think of it it has been seen in this area yes it is like one giant portal yeah that's pretty much the only um and i mentioned king i mentioned um king philip's war a lot of people believe that it is cursed because of king philip's war but i believe that um Wampanoag actually had stories about seeing things and experiencing things inside this area long before white settlers. Um, they have UFOs. Lots of they UFO sightings. do have UFOs. Um, yeah, for like... 300 years or so like I think the first UFO sighting was 1760 we weren't even the United States yet and UFOs were already being seen um, they're pretty much described as like spheres of fire I don't know I kind of think there's also been sightings of black helicopters and so I'm going to lump that in with the UFO. You remember the, um, it was all over Facebook about a month ago, people seeing low flying planes? Yes. We saw one over the house the other day. Really? Barely touch, barely over the treetops. See, I haven't had so anything, weird. I haven't seen anything like that, but I also live in the city and if there was a plane that low we would all probably just assume that it was going to like the hospital or something although I don't know why a plane would land at the hospital but you you know what I'm saying um yeah pretty much UFOs are sighted all the time uh, two supposedly landed along Route 44 which Route 44 also has its own other issues going on um, the town of, uh, I know I'm saying this wrong, but the Rainaham has glowing balls of light and it kind of just floats above the ground. Which could be ghost lights, could be UFOs. Right. But the gist of the story is creepy stuff. Bigfoot hangs out there because I don't think yeah. that you can have UFOs without Bigfoot. You know, there are I, there's a lot of research that says, sorry, there's a lot of research that speculates that Bigfoot may actually be an alien. Hmm, possibly. But there are actually stories from Native American tribes, very different Native American tribes, that talk about a race of Bigfoots basically. I like to think of them as giant chewies. Yeah, that makes sense. So, supposedly Bigfoot lives in the Hockamock Swamp. And there are people who went hunting and a guy shot a Bigfoot. and But he thought that he was shooting a bear. But apparently bears are extinct there. Is that not bizarre? Like, I can't even imagine living in a place where bears are extinct. I know, because we have so many. Yeah, like, I live in the city, and there was a bear running down our road, like, last summer. Okay. Very fun. I just pulled up... Uh, how many of our listeners know of the UFO reporting site? Um, I think it's MUFON, MORFON... Dot com. I do not know that. Well, I just pulled it up and zoomed into the Bridgewater Triangle area. Uh-huh. And there are UFO reports all over the place. 
Well, I mean, that's kind of what my research basically just gave up because apparently there were that many reports that they don't even give you dates because it, they're just so many. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm clicking on them. It's, they're just all over the place. There's reported sites of Thunderbirds in the Bridgewater Triangle area, particularly in the swamp area. Right. Um, kind of the pterodactyl describe, like, description. Yeah. You know, I've always thought that there was some link between the description of Thunderbirds and Mothman. Yeah. I mean, could be. Yeah. Um... And for those who don't know, Thunderbirds are um, in Native American myths. Giant birds that um, usually come on storms. Not to be confused with the airplane that the USAF has. Yeah. Um, and then... I didn't know anything about this particular creature that is sighted heavily in the Bridgewater Triangle area until we were setting in Miss Luann's tent outside of her house and she mentioned it. And I thought that Heather was just going to like pack up and move right then. Yes. This instantly has become my favorite paranormal creature. Puck wedgie. A puck what? A puck wedgie. puck wedgie. They are small, just a few feet tall, gnome-like creatures that live in the forest. And they're kind of like me. They're sometimes good and sweet and will help you out. And they're sometimes evil. Basically, I'm a puck wedgie. Yeah. So, yeah. Um... There's actually a fun video on YouTube of someone being possessed by Puck Wedgie. She's full of crap, but it's fun to watch. And if you're listening to me, you are not possessed by Puck Wedgie. We both know that. There is a story of a guy, Mike Russo, who was out walking his dog and encountered what he thinks is a Puck Wedgie. Well, a couple Puck Wedgies. So they were walking and the dog started freaking out and did not want to continue on. And he gets a little closer and he sees these um, small troll-like creatures that are about three feet tallish. And he said that they were they had pump bellies big eyes super furry um and they were saying we want you we want you come here come here and so he, basically a puck wedgie is like an ewok only evil right so he said that him and his dog hightailed it out of there i would like to tame a puck wedgie and keep it as a pet that would be interesting. You have a lot of pets. Well, that's true. So, off topic, I was just searching around on the MUFON website, and there is a um, report from South Point, Ohio. Oh, really? And the report was made by a cop. About a puck wedgie? No, but um, UFO. Oh, we keep jumping around. Sorry. Sorry. Let's get back to the puck wedgies. Okay. Um, that's actually all I have about a puck wedgie. Just that they kind of live in the forest, in the swamps. The, you're, you hear them a lot in um, Mohican, Wampanoag, Algonquin, and Ojibwe um, folklore. Oh, they're just, they're really... I would love to meet a puck wedgie. Hopefully the next time we go to Massachusetts, we encounter one. Seriously, we're going back next summer. Okay. 
I'll start saving my pennies. Okay, me too. Um, what else? There is... I already mentioned the black helicopters. Although people really do believe that it's like a helicopter, but I am I really am going to just lump it in with... Um, it's the men in black! Okay, so there's been animal mutilations. They don't know why. So they're kind of like tossing the animal mutations up to it could be bigfoot could be a puck wedgie could be the I don't, aliens i don't puck wedgies don't strike me as stuff that would um mutilate animals well maybe not but a single adult cow was found butchered in the woods yeah true that's pretty gross and then a herd of calves was found slaughtered um the bridge no, triangle area are so cute like why would you do that puck wedgie or I don't alien, think I don't or think Bigfoot. Um, that area back during the 80s was also known as a hot spot for satanic activity. But, if you all remember our satanic panic episode... Every place is a hotbed of satanic activity. If you let bored housewives dictate what's going on in the world. That's true. Or little girls. You know, that's an you know, insult to board witch. housewives. Because most of them don't care. But, I don't know. Um, okay. Of course, then the mutilations could also be the phantom dogs. In 1976, uh, there were several Abington residents that said that they saw large phantom dogs with red eyes. And that those large phantom dogs also killed two ponies. Now, I don't know. I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. But, you know, these are all... I, just whenever somebody talks about vicious dogs, I kind of have to see it to believe it. Because, while yes, there are mean dogs, generally they're mean because people are dicks. And have made them that way. I am so terrified walking, you know... Not on our property so much as walking up the road to get to our barn because of our neighbor's Great Pyrenees. Yeah, and you know, and I you know an Great Pyrenees are Pyrenees. usually very lovey dogs, but this one has no training and is kept on a very either on a very short leash or in a cage that is smaller than my bed. And uh, it just it snaps at the end of the leash the whole time I'm walking past it. Oh my god, I, I totally went off on this guy um, a couple weeks ago. Actually, it was, I had, I was, I had Hank with me, and this guy pulls up beside me with his kids, and uh, he like, was like, oh, can my kids pet your dog? Yeah. Does he bite? No. So, while his kids were petting Hank, he was but telling Hank me. Hank does bite. He does. <laughs> he does nip, but not like mean. Like that's how just how he plays. Um, and he has a flat face, so he really has a hard time getting. Yeah, he know. has to really like like he gets his entire face in there. He's God, I love him so much. Uh, but anyway, so this guy was telling me all about this pit bull that he had, and how um, he kept the dog in a cage. When the dog wasn't in the cage, he was on a shock collar, and how, you know, he was, he became aggressive, and he had to put him down, and I was like, I'm sorry, dumbass, if you were kept in a cage, and when you're not in a cage, you're being shocked, how happy do you think you're going to be with that situation? Don't you think you're going to be a bit snippy, too? Should I shoot you in the face? Sorry. Is just that's one of the things that angers me more than anything else is don't get a dog if it's gonna spend his whole life on a short leash terrible owners right oh my god anyway I'm letting it go so I don't get riled up about that but yeah oh my god that made me mad so yeah it could possibly be actual phantom dogs or it could be people set dogs out i don't know if they do that in new england but in kentucky it's not uncommon for people to set their dogs out if they decide they don't want them anymore and then the poor dogs have to fend for themselves in any way that they possibly can 
because people are dicks. Okay, so also in this area, other random animals that probably shouldn't belong, like alligators, giant turtles, I'm giant down for snakes, some giant turtles, black panthers, like all being seen in this area. Not lying though, I did see a panther at Paintsville Lake when I was probably late elementary school. Probably well, middle school age, but we didn't have middle school then. You know, this is one of those spots, this this was one of those stories that the more I started researching, the more interesting this whole swath of land became. I mean, of course, I've known about this area of Massachusetts since, like, school. Um, we studied King Philip's War. I knew that um, at the end of the war, 3,000 Wampanoag men, women, and children were either killed off or put on slave ships to head to the West Indies. You know, I knew that somewhere in this area, now I know it, you know, as the Wampan, as the, um, um, Hockamock Swamp, the chief of, um, the Wampanoags Medicom was betrayed by his own men and beheaded by the English settlers. So I knew, you know, that this area played an important role in, in shaping this, you know, our world's history. But I didn't realize how deep of a history it had paranormally. Well, I didn't even know about the war, so... Did you sleep in history class? I had some really bad history teachers. Seriously, I hated anything at all to do with history. Well, basically until we started doing this podcast. I have learned more in the last two years than I ever have in any of my years in school. Um, well, okay, how about we talk about all the crazy murders? We can do that. So, um, there have been a dozen confirmed murders just in the forest area between 78 and 88. And this led, this really helped fuel the satanic panic of the Freetown area. Right, because, listen, people can be murdered and it not be satanic, okay? It could be a serial killer. It could. And this was just happened to be a really good dumping ground. Um, although, the fact that there is a underground bunker that's kind of hidden out of sight that actually that leads me to believe that it's probably a serial killer yeah uh, one of the first people found in the swamp was the body of um, 15 year old Mary Lou Aruda she disappeared from Rayham, Massachusetts. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong because people in Massachusetts have the sweetest accent in the world. I know. That's what really why I want to move there is so that my accent will change. Yeah. And she was found uh, murdered and tied to a tree. The only bad thing about moving is y'all don't do monograms up there. So I, d I don't know. Like That's a little weird to me because you know, in the South, we monogram everything. But I could get used. I, I could I could maybe do a way I can't do. It. I'm going to have to make you guys like monograms, guys. Long history of abductions and murders and bodies being dumped there. Um, there have been incidences of hazardous waste being dumped there in the 90s. It's where superheroes are created. Of course. But I think one of the funniest things I found while researching this was in 2006, an emu was found wandering in the forest. An emu? An emu. It apparently escaped from someone's farm. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't believe in um, the satanic cult activity that some people said they witnessed inside the... Um, 
State Forest. <sighs> We've seen countless um, convictions overturned because it turns out that everyone was not participating in satanic rituals. Right. But, um... Okay, so let's talk next about the uh, Route 44 hitchhiker. Because at first they didn't specify that it was a guy, and I was like, I promise I am not hitchhiking. Uh, so anyway, along Route 44 uh, in Seekonk, there is a red-headed hitchhiker. And when I first read this, I thought, oh my god, my sister is a hitchhiker. Yeah, I would never hitchhike because I, well, I'm obsessed with serial killers. And do you know how dangerous that is? Like, seriously, I was talking to a guy a couple of years ago. And he told me that at one point in time he was homeless and he hitchhiked everywhere. And I scolded him about hitchhiking. And, of course, by this time, you know, he had a extremely good job and had a car but I was still I was like do you know that's how people get murdered but, I mean at the time I don't really think that he was thinking about that I think he was just thinking I don't have a car and this is how I need to go places um but yeah so redheaded hitchhiker and he has long red hair and a full beard and when you stop to pick him up he disappears um, although one lady said that she ran over him. And when she stopped her car to get out to check on him, he was gone, but she could hear laughter. Yeah, you know, I think if I ran over somebody in the middle of the night on a dark road, I would probably not get out of my car. I would not either. I would stay in I would, my car. I would call 911, yeah. Well, because one, I don't want to see a dead body. And two, I would want help so I would stay in my car and call 911 um, sometimes this hitchhiker is well kept other times he's dirty and in disarray but he's always dressed in a plaid shirt that's the uniform of hitchhikers isn't it yeah and his hair is always red um I found it interesting, I don't know how much I believe this, but I saw it on several sites that I was using for research. Um, earlier I mentioned that the Hawk, that the, um, that the Hockamock Swamp was home to an 8,000 year old Native American burial ground. Right. Well, apparently when archaeologists first discovered this, they were digging, and when they hit the the bodies, they experienced red bubbles coming up out of the ground, and then the bodies disappeared. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how much I believe that. Um, no sight I found could give me solid proof, you know, like one of the actual archaeologists' written notes. But several sites mentioned it, so I thought that, you know, maybe our listeners would like to hear that apparently 8,000-year-old bones can just, poof, turn to dust. Hmm. I did not know that. Um, okay, so there are other haunted areas, like the Taunton State Hospital where you can have your shoulders and legs touched and be pulled on when you enter certain areas of the hospital. Okay, listen, I need a back rub. Okay, we're going there. I'm down for that. The ghosts that haunted mine and Jessica's dorm room in college would sometimes give us back rubs. That was very nice. Yeah, that's also one of the reasons why we called him Pervert Pete. The, well, that um, he would peep in on the, in the shower. That was not cool, Pete. Uh, the Ossinet Lodge, also probably pronounced wrong. Um, it is kind of a remote location, and 
there's a ghost that stands on top of the ledge and then jumps before he disappears. That's sad. Uh, well, I mean, I guess you can't disappear before you jump because then people wouldn't know that you actually jumped. True. John Brightman from the New England Paranormal Research Group said that when he was on top of the ledge, he realized that a spirit told him to jump or leave. So, I don't know if somebody had committed suicide there and now wants everybody to commit suicide there, but probably. Yeah. Um... Um, the Horbein School, one room schoolhouse located in Rehoboth, uh, is haunted by its former inhabitants. How horrible would that be to have to haunt a school? That's what I thought the whole time we were at the um, Post Hill Elementary School in Ohio. Because it is so super haunted. And a couple of the ghosts are, you know, actual employees. Like one of them is the janitor. How horrible would that be to be tr stuck at work for eternity? One of the students that supposedly haunts post elementary school didn't die at the school. She died at home after being pushed off, uh, pushed um, over the railing of the stairwell. Oh. And I'm like, how absolutely horrible to have to go through that again and again and again. I know. You know what today is? What? The it, today's Alexis's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Alexis! In the hereafter. Yeah, uh, we may have mentioned this on the podcast before, but I'm, I'm not for sure if we did or not. But uh, my youngest daughter, her best friend, died two days before her birthday. So she died two days ago. Um, just after school let out for the summer. Yeah, like school had just let out, and she died at home. Um, and so Nothing every, sinister or anything. No, she had a, a medical issue. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't anything. It wasn't anything bad. Um, and so every year we go and visit her grave. And although Emmy's not home today, so we didn't go visit it. But I did visit it a couple weeks ago, and we're going to go take her flowers when Emmy comes back. But yeah, we do. It's something we do every single year. Um, we just kind of go and. Emmy tells her what happened, you know, during the school year, and they have their little moment together, and we leave. And I hope that she's, I hope that she's not haunting their elementary school. I, I just hope that everybody young. I mean, I, I don't really care if old people haunt well, stuff, but Alexis, kids, I just want them to go have if, some fun. Alexis, if you don't want to move on and you want a place to haunt, Holly's house is open. Yeah, I mean. Emmy will talk to you. She don't care. You can I join the ranks of her other ghost best friends. I still get choked up. Their senior, like their senior year high school graduation is probably going to kill me. When they left elementary school, there was a table, you know, that was kind of a, in memorial of her. And they didn't do anything in middle school because I mean, she'd been dead for so many years that most of those middle school kids didn't know her. But I don't know. I just think high school something should be said or done. It just just kills my heart. Um, but anyway, so haunted school, haunted by its inhabitants. Uh, it was built in 1840, and it was in active use until 1937. People actually are able to visit this place, but it's only on certain Sundays, only during the summer, and you have to have an appointment. Well, we might try to make arrangements so that we can visit it while we're there. Yeah, that sounds fun. I love, love touring old buildings. Oh, I do too, Especially but usually more it. for, uh, ag I start to say agriculture more for architecture purposes than anything. Yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons why I love visiting old Civil War battlefields if they still have houses standing. Um, we actually had an interesting encounter at um, I'm blanking on the name of the farmhouse. 
but we was it was one of the houses um on the Antietam battlefield. It's really close to like across the road from the auto farmhouse. I'm one to say the roulette farm, probably not. Maybe this I don't know. I'll look it up and tell you all later if you're still interested. But me and Abby was walking around and then she went back to the car and about 15 minutes later I walked back to the car she's looked at me and she said, Honey, how did you get in the house? Apparently she was seeing someone walking around upstairs in the house while I was around the back of the house looking. The house was, I remember you guys coming back and telling me that. Yeah. The house was all locked up. I was, you know, I was in the back just peeking in windows and didn't see anything peeking in, but very interesting. I believe it was at Anawan Rock that Luann got some really good EVPs of Wampanoags. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, um, and they're talked about in the um, Bridgewater Triangle documentary, which is a must-watch. It is. Actually, it doesn't have anything to do with Bridgewater Triangle, but, I mean, really, you need to buy her book, too. Yes. Um, it's Her pen name is A.E. Angel. Yeah, buy her book. Watch the documentary. We'll try to have a link to her book um, in the notes, show notes to this episode. We will. Oh, I guess we um, probably could tell people what it is. Her book is uh, yeah. called... Now, Dead Whispers, Ghosts of the EVPs. Um, it's got four and a half stars on Amazon. Yeah, pretty awesome. Comes with a um, little CD so you can listen to some of her best um, captured EVPs. All of them are ones that she captured herself were members of her team. So, pretty awesome. Yeah, maybe when we come back to Boston next summer, maybe we can all get together and go out and Maybe. catch our own EVPs or something. Um, oh, there's only one of her books left in stock on Amazon, so you better get it now. <laughs> oh. Um, she's actually working on another book right now. I am one of her peer readers for it. And Are you really? I was really going to, good. but I'm, I'm so busy, I can't. Oh, it's really good. The last chapter she sent me, like, it was painful to read it was so good uh see i i love her posts on facebook i mean i know you guys aren't facebook friends with her but it would be like my malevolent typing fingers are hard at work today i mean she is she's awesome yes um i love her to death she is she is one of my sisters well being one of your sisters i happily accept her into our family Good, because she's been one of my sisters for years. <laughs> um, we met online on a um, internet forum about the paranormal, and we bonded over mutual experiences with demons. And we've just been we've been friends ever since. And she was so excited when we uh, sent her a message saying, "Hey." We're in our car, and we're heading to Massachusetts. <laughs> but I've been hearing her talk about visiting the Bridgewater Triangle for 15 years or so. And I've, I've been wanting to get up there. I'm glad we finally did. I would just wish we actually could have spent some time exploring these places. Well, we will. We'll actually go to Plymouth Rock this time. Awesome. Profile Rock. A local looks like legend, a profile of an Indian. Looks like a profile of an Indian. And local legend says that Native American ghost dancers in warrior dress can be seen. I wonder if this is a... I'm going to have to Google this real quick. Okay. What, do you think we saw it? No. Well, I was just wondering it. if um, this is a different ghost dance than what then you know the spiritual movement led by Wavoka was. I didn't oh. think that that ghost dance moved this far east. 
I don't know. But of course, okay. This is white people seeing Native American ghosts dancing around a rock. True. It could be anything. It is probably not the same ghost dance from the ghost dance movement of the 1890s. Yeah. So, it has been the site of other grisly murders and bodies being found. And also satanic activity. But satanic activity pretty much goes with any negative energy, I think. Which, according to everybody who's ever been here, says that this place is nothing but negative energy. Well, I mean, you got to take into consideration. This is, a, Profile Rock is a site that was supposed to be sacred, and now it's got a bunch of irreverent people crawling all over hunting for ghosts. Right. I'd be giving you some negative energy, too. Well, and it's off, it's just off Route 24, so it's super easy to get to. So, I mean, you know, it's just a really good place to murder and dump a body. Not that I've ever done that there. I'm just saying that it seems like the kind of place that you could do that. Massachusetts Police, we are not going to dump a body in the um, Bridgewater Triangle. No. I mean, because now you know that's what we would do. So the Dighton Rock, um, it is found um, directly across from the uh, um, Grassy Island in Hagamock Swamp. Yes, and it is on the banks of the Taunton River. It has yet to be deciphered, but the rock is um, trapezoid shaped. And about the size of a Volkswagen. It weighs 40 tons. You know, do you remember that rock that was outside that church? That they painted pink. And like that's, you would turn left to get to our old house. So yes. we would just say turn left at the pink rock. Yes. I feel like if we could pick that rock up and move it to Massachusetts and just set it somewhere, it would be a landmark. Like it would be like a massive landmark. It would be like pink rock or something so and like people would come from far away to see it so what you're saying is you want to get a flatbed truck and steal that rock i do because you I know really, what would be even more famous though the lord we, rock i would say if we went up to butcher holler and stole lord lynn rock which literally people is just a rock that says lord lynn's home place and an arrow pointing to which side of the which road you take <laughs> it, it's not like you know some big rock that, you know, she sat on or something. Well, she probably did, but... We it's all sat on that rock. It's just how um, directions are gave to her home place for the tourists. But we could take that and put that there, and it will be a landmark. But then people would be very confused about what Loretta Lynn was doing in New England. True. And because Herman, Herman probably would give us a call Southern. and be like, Why'd y'all steal my rock? Yeah. Tourists are getting lost. <laughs> And then, then we'd have to answer to the entire family, and I just It'd don't have it in me. Okay, we'll steal the pink rock instead. Okay, yeah, nobody's going to miss that pink rock. And the um, pink rock literally just has had a gallon of pink paint dumped on it. Yeah. Um. So, the Hockamock Swamp, like we said, it has oh, had Bigfoot, it's we had only, Thunderbirds. We were still talking about Dighton Rock. Where are we? I thought we were done. Okay, no. let's go back um, to Dighton Rock. It's, it's covered with petroglyphs and geometric shapes, drawings of weird figures. Um, strange, you know, animals. And so far it's not been uh, transcribed. Um, some say that it is actually Norse in origin. And if you remember, I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that some there are good reasons to believe that the Vikings were actually some of the first settlers in um, the first just people to discover North America after the Native Americans. Um, some link it to the Phoenicians. Others link it to the Chinese. Um, in... 1960, the Reverend Cotton Mather of Salem fame 
wrote in his book, The Wonderful Works of God Commemorated. Up, he wrote about the um, Dighton Rock. And he said, Among other curiosities of New England, one is that of Mighty Rock, a perpendicular side um, whereof by a river, which at high tide covers part of it. They are very deeply engraved. No man alive knows how or when about half a score lines, near ten foot long and a foot and a half broad, filled with strange characters, which would suggest odd thoughts about them that were here before us. As there are odd shapes in that elaborate monument. People back then had a weird way of talking. They did. Um, I'm surprised that he didn't declare it witchcraft and order it broken up. Okay, so Akamak Swamp. Pretty much people have call it the place where spirits dwell. That Yeah, that's what the Wampanoag knew it as. But I mean, of course, they had an 8,000 year old burial ground there. Right. Pretty much this is where everything happens. Bigfoot's here. Yeah. UFOs it, are here. It's a decent sized plot of land. It's 5,000 square. Are here. Yeah, it's 5,000 square um, acres. So decent size. Um, it's got crazy plants and yeah. This is like the um, I like to think of this swamp area as tw like the twilight zone. Like crazy stuff just appears here. And then disappears. Right. Or it could be like the movie Lost. Like it's like that island. Like yeah. you don't know what you're going to see here. It is the largest freshwater swamp in the state of Massachusetts. But I do not recommend drinking from it because no telling what might happen to you. It might be the Fountain of Youth Hall. <gasps> Shoot. Why would you say that? Now I'm going to want to go drink it. Part of my evil plan. So mean. Um, so when archaeologists opened some graves on the grassy island in the swamp, like red okra stuff mysteriously started bubbling up and then it just like literally just dissolved away the graves just yeah disappeared that's um, so creepy english settlers actually called the hockamock swamp the devil's swamp well i can and see you know that. if Puritan colonists are going to call it the Devil's Swamp. It is the place that Holly and I are going to hang out. Yep, we're totally going there. Um, according to several popular websites that rank things like the world's creepiest places, Bridgewater Triangle and the Hockamock Swamp is right up there with Roswell, New Mexico, the Bermuda Triangle, Gettysburg, and the Paris Catacombs. Okay, can we just say, though, why Roswell, New Mexico? Because, as we covered a few episodes ago, the aliens no longer are in Roswell. The aliens are in Dayton, Ohio, in a building on Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, well, which I am not allowed on. I am wondering why Gettysburg Battlefield. I've been there numerous times, and I will tell you that there are much more haunted um, battlefields in the United States than Gettysburg. Because Gettysburg is a good name. It is. And I, you know, I love Gettysburg. Um, actually, Abby, at, at graduation, Abby was telling me that she's starting to get that itch that she needs to go back to Gettysburg soon. So, in a year or two, we'll probably be making our way back up there. Yeah, I don't do battlefields. Well, we won't make you go with us. But you will be missing out on a lot of really awesome architecture in houses that you can tour. And I see, I do love that. I you can actually go... rent um, historic houses that you know were there before the battle. That's I on the battlefield friend... and stay there. And I, I would love friend... to do that at some point. I have a friend who's a real estate agent, and he laughs at me. He's like, every time I see you, meaning every time he sees me, all I'm doing is talking about houses. 
and I can't help it. I love houses. I love, I love specifically old houses. Although I really kind of wish that somebody had talked me out of buying a house that was 60 some years old because it was your dream house. I know, and it still is. It's just that 60 year old plumbing and 60 year old electrical and 60 year old trees that want to destroy my foundation are not my favorites. Surprisingly, not my favorites. But original hardwood floor and arches and, and a fireplace. And fireplace. And Look on the bright side. At least the fireplace had been converted to gas. Thankfully. And plaster walls that have been sanded down so that they're not super bumpy. <sighs> yeah. Um, there's been artifacts found in the Hockamock Swamp that's actually over 9,000 years old. People have seen... Native Americans paddling canoes. Uh, I thought we weren't there. Well, I don't even own a canoe yet, so. Oh, well, I don't either. I want a canoe. Me too. I think that'd be fun. One man, um, this article only calls him, um, DeAndre. I'm probably pronouncing his name, and I'm so sorry if I am. Uh, he said, I was standing there, and for some reason I had to turn around. It was a chill or something inside of me. I think anybody who's ever been in a paranormal situation knows that feeling. Oh, yeah. And when I turned around, and there, off to the right, maybe 200 yards away, there was this, well, I don't know what it was. It was a creature. It was brown and hairy and big and apish. It was making its way for the woods, and I didn't stick around to watch where it um, was going. I ran for the street. Totally don't blame him. I would... Well, I don't know. I'd probably stick around. I'm weird like that. Um, I don't know what I would do. Probably pee myself and then run. Or run as I'm peeing myself. But I guarantee that peeing myself and running will be part of that equation. Yes. Um, a man named Chris Pittman, who in this article claimed he was a student of the paranormal. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. That means that you study the paranormal, duh. Um, says that he believes that, the, that what's happening in the Hockamock Swamp is a gravitational anomaly caused by um, glacial activity mounting alluvium deposits. Okay, I don't know what any of that means. I don't either. He also says something about it's, you know, the peat bedding. The peat that is decaying on the, in the swamp. I don't know. Uh, somebody has been hitting the pot in Boston Common too much. I think I got contact high walking through the park. It was odd to see open use of marijuana. I know. In a state that won't even let me open carry a gun. Well, it's because everybody's high. They don't want you to be high and have a gun. So, let me just jump right in here and do my weekly plug of my shop. So, if you're sitting there right now thinking, you know what I really need? A shirt that says Puck Wedgie? <gasps> I will make a Puck Wedgie shirt. No, okay. I was thinking, you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know what? I really need a Bigfoot shirt. Or, I really want a UFO shirt. Holly has actually you added get some, them? she has added some really super cute Bigfoot shirts to her shop recently. I have. And they're, I mean, the UFO shirts are cute too, but personally, 
I'm thinking that the Bigfoot shirts are freaking hysterical. And you know, so buy yourself a Bigfoot shirt or the Puckwager shirt that she's going to be coming out with soon. And then wear it while you explore the Bridgewater Triangle. Yeah. Um, I will also put a link to my shop in our show notes. But you can search for me on Etsy. And it's Cat Hair Glitter. Uh, capital C, capital H, capital G. Cat Hair Glitter. Uh, because if you order from me, you will probably get a little bit of both with your order free it's completely free it's like buy a shirt get some cat hair and glitter i was mailing out some stickers this week to somebody and i realized that almost every time i lay down the transfer tape i'm getting tons of lint from other sewing projects so maybe i should change my shop to sewing lint (laughs) you should (laughs) no although as much as we cut fabric on that table, it's impossible to get all of the little sh- little tiny fuzzies from fabric off of it. Well, I think I'm st- I think I'm going to start a spinoff shop for uh, kids clothes because I always feel weird selling kids clothes with my adult stuff because my adult stuff is is it's almost all sarcastic. I mean, other than you know, like there are sports related shirts. But for the most part, my shirts are sarcastic, and a lot of them have the use of the word fuck. And and I don't know, it just feels a little weird. So I'm thinking about a spinoff shop for kids stuff. That'd I haven't be decided nice. yet. Cat hair yeah. and... Glitter kids or something, I don't know. But yeah. That's just something we're thinking about. Not weird. Um, just Holly. Yeah, just... So, anyway. Bigfoot shirts, UFO shirts, or just anything sarcastic that, you know... Or, hey, I am open to suggestions. If there's something that you really, really, really want, uh, if send you me love, an email. If you love your favorite podcast, Haunted Family Podcast, so much that you want to wear a shirt... Oh, yeah, we've got Haunted Family Podcast shirts, too. Holly will sell you one of our shirts. I will. So, anyway, you can get any of that from our shop. Or if there's something that you want that I don't have, uh, send us an email at hauntedfamilypodcast at gmail.com, and I'll, I'll make something custom. I'm not too good to design. And that is the shameless plug of Holly Shop for the week. And that is the shameless plug of Holly Shop. So, stupid criminal. Oh, let me pull this thing up. We actually, we have changed our stupid criminal pretty much every day this week. Yeah, because every day stupid another criminal. stupid criminal pops up. Um... It was going to be couple steals motorized shopping cart to drive to a bar, which I mean that's just smart. I mean yeah. you don't want to you don't want to wreck your car. But then today, a friend because our friends are always looking out for our super criminals sent me a link to a story that happened today in West Virginia. Milton, West Virginia, so not far from us. Um, those of you who watch um, Food Network, Katie Lee, that's on um, the kitchen, she's from Milton. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, Milton police say that an order from Taco Bell landed a mother in jail. After I mean, she is accused, who has of, not had that happen? After she is accused of hitting her child in the face because he ordered the wrong toppings on her burrito. Police okay, said, "I can't say that I've done that." And this is from WCHSTV.com. Police say that Loretta Lynn Armstrong, 48, is charged with felony child abuse and three misdemeanors after an incident in the family's residence. Corporal Dean Bishop was the first officer at the scene. And this is what he says. 
The mother was hitting the child in the face, Bishop said, describing what he first saw at, I'm not going to give you your address. Um, Bishop had said that he separated Armstrong from her youngest child and tried to put her in handcuffs when she broke free and threw herself down on the driveway. She was screaming, cussing, yelling, and claiming that she was having a heart attack, Bishop said. EMTs were called and they confirmed that Armstrong was not, in fact, having a heart attack. Bishop and several other officers who were called to the scene to assist loaded her in the back of a police cruiser and took her to jail. All in all, from the moment we arrested her to the time we finished the arrest was about three hours. During those three hours, she didn't settle down the whole time, Bishop said. Dang it. Her oldest son... This is why cops and teachers are highly underpaid. Yes. Armstrong's oldest son, Jesse, refused an on-camera interview. I don't blame him. But came to his mother's defense and he said she was a church-going woman who wouldn't hurt a fly. Okay, why is it? Why is it every time somebody goes insane, they always say they were a good church-going person? Well, that does not mean that they're not crazy as fuck. That does not mean that they are not, in fact, a horrible person. Going to church does not make you a good person. It just makes you somebody who goes to church. The officer clarified by saying that she went too far. There's a difference you between think? spanking your child and punching your child in the face. Bishop said... There's no sense in ever getting into an argument like that over a burrito. Just let it go. I, I mean, I just want to know like what was on the burrito because did it not have guac? Because in I, in my if opinion, to, if you put tomatoes on my burrito, it'll kind of ruin the burrito for me. Like, is this the seven layer burrito was pretty much perfect. Although, actually, I think you just layered it a little bit different. But in general, seven layer burrito was perfect. It, I would never punch anybody in the face if they gave me a seven layer burrito. But when I go to Taco Bell, I'm usually just getting a crunchy taco supreme. If I go to Taco Bell, I'm usually getting a steak quesadilla. Or a party pack. So, another shameless plug. Let's say... You listen to this podcast every week and you are jealous at how awesome we are and you want to be famous also because we're famous. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Millions of listeners. You want to be as famous as your best friends at Haunted Family Podcast. And really, there's only one way to do that and that is start a podcast using Podbean and our affiliate code Hana Family PB. They will help you set it all up, walk you through everything. It's super easy and it it's pretty much I don't know, it's it's the easiest thing about our podcast because it posts to uh, YouTube already for us. Like, we don't do anything with that. It takes care of all the website stuff for us. We don't have to do anything with that. Basically, I upload, write a description, and everything else is done for us. We can even go and check what state is our most downloaded state. Which, that is a feature that I love very, very, very much. We check we can it all the time. See, we do. Um, we can see what countries download us. We can see what people are downloading us on. Whether it's an Android or their computer or uh, iTunes. Uh, it breaks all of that down. And it's just so... Oh, also we can see how many times individual episodes were downloaded. Not only will we know who is listening to us where, but we know which episodes you like the best. Yes. Um, for this, for the month of May, 
Texas was our number one download state. Yay, we love you, Texas. Followed by California, Florida, Illinois, and then Kentucky. Woo! We have not been paying people in Kentucky to listen to us. So actually, I, I think that most of our friends don't even know we have a podcast. I know, so I don't really know how that happened. That Kentucky likes us, but you know what, Kentucky, we're so glad that you like us because we love you. That's why we live here. That and we've always lived here. Yeah, and we haven't found jobs in Massachusetts yet. Yeah, I can't really do my job outside of Kentucky because, well, my job is kind of a Kentucky job, literally. Um, if you liked this episode, then you can show your love for us on the Twitter by going to Twitter? Haunted. It's like the Walmart. Yes, by going on the Twitter. Um, go to hauntedfamilypodcast.com slash tweet and click the big tweet and you will, um, And it will bring up a pre-filled tweet. All I have to do is hit, you know, tweet it, and it will tell you, tell the world that you love Haunted Family Podcast. And link back to our website so that other people can find us and listen to us and love us. Also, follow us on Instagram because that's where we're most active. Although, obviously, if you send us a message on Facebook, we respond almost instantly. But like it goes to our phone, and we're, we always have our phones in our hands. Yeah. And, again, send us pictures of your animals, because we want to see them. And we want to hear stories about them. We do. We should do an episode on um, how the paranormal affects animals. Oh, I could do a whole story on just how, just my poor animals. I could tell the story about that ghost that told my dog to shut up. Yeah. So my dog listened. Story. My dog never listens to me, but he listens to a ghost. Uh, yeah. Ghosts are scary. If you've got a story about something that freaked your animals out, um, send us a message and let us know. Or an email. Hauntedfamilypodcast at gmail.com. I check that. Um. Yeah, and, you know, who knows? Your story might make it on the podcast. Who are we kidding? It will make it on the podcast. You can be anonymous if you want. Or not. Yeah, But we'll probably get your name wrong. Unless you write out, like... (laughs) How to pronounce it. How to pronounce it. (laughs) I think this person's name is... Joe... John... Joe... Joe Lee... I was thinking the poor person's name is Tina, but we call her Tina or or something <laughs> like that. Or it's Leah, and we pronounce it Leia. No, I would. Yeah, I probably would do that, but I would never pronounce Leia Leah. I showed a shirt this week, and the girl had my middle name as her first name, and I so wanted to leave a note in her package that asked her how to pronounce it but I did not want to be creepy so I just I just let it go but secretly I'm hoping that she spells or that she pronounces it how I pronounce mine Holly I reenact with a girl whose name is spelled Leia and pronounced Leah um that's wrong that's wrong did I say that's wrong I think you might have mentioned that's wrong that's wrong we've got a swimmer in the next county that um i don't know how old she is but she's in high school and whenever she gets in my lane i always call her princess because her name is leah i think she secretly hates that but she lets me do it anyway probably because i told her my dog's name is leah it's not really my dog it's abby's dog who am i kidding that is the reason why abby didn't go away to college yeah This child could have really went into almost any college in the country that she wanted to. Because she's so pursued. Honestly, when we went when we went to New England, we stopped at Yale because that's where she wanted to go. But she settled on little old Morehead State University because she could walk to school and she didn't have to worry about her mom stealing her dog while she was gone. I said we would FaceTime her every night so she could see her. (laughs) But yeah, it's not the same. Okay, well, thanks for listening. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. 
We do. Sorry. I wasn't asleep or anything. We I, really thought, do I thought you went to sleep. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Like us and rate us and review us on iTunes. Hopefully on the close for me so I can afford to go back to New England. Find our YouTube channel and watch some of the videos because, I mean, we don't have a whole lot of, you know, original content on our YouTube page yet. But what we have is pretty cool. Oh, no, listen. I am doing a great video. Probably have it done this weekend. Hopefully it'll be up. Hopefully it'll be up actually about the same time that this episode, um, this podcast episode is live. So if you have ever wondered what you need and how to make a voodoo doll, you'll want to watch this. Are you going to show them how to baptize it? Maybe. Okay. Well, I got some new recording equipment in today for, um... Our YouTube channel, so the next time we record together. Fun. Yes, we won't have to keep borrowing stuff off Emmy. Secretly, that's why I bought it all for her. Well, now we have our own stuff. I think our YouTube channel is really awesome. I love being able to share um, more hands on things with our listeners. Actually, if there is something that you uh, want us to do a video on, just let us know. We're pretty much open to any suggestion. We we eventually plan on doing a whole video series on some of those um, Bloody Mary style um, slumber party games. Yeah, we just have to have a moment at Holly's house that the animals aren't the animals aren't going crazy, and you know we can actually get things done. Because on most days, if we lock candles in Holly's house, the cat's going to lock it over and burn the house down. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.